This is my father, father, father. He is my father, and he is in heaven. I have a father, father, father. I have a father who lives in heaven. Good morning. God bless you, and I welcome you specially. It's Thursday morning by the grace of God. And it's the seventh day of um, November 2024. God has been so faithful and gracious to us. He has been so good and glorious in our lives. We return all the glory to his precious and glorious name forever. In the precious name of Jesus. This one I'll be looking at first this, um, Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and verse number 2. The Bible says, Now the Spirit of God, my emphasis, speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devil, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, at the time that Paul was, I mean, Paul was writing this to Timothy, at that time, uh, this is many years ago, many centuries ago, I believe, many decades ago, at that time, the preaching of uh, of the end time, uh, the preaching of Jesus is coming back, uh, was as fresh and current as if it was coming back in their times. And that was how you discovered that one of the, um, that I don't know if it's a Thessalonical church or something like that, you know, they became very worried and troubled. Why? Because in their bit of waiting for the coming of Jesus, some of their brothers are dying. That they had to write to Paul that what's going on, what's happening. You know, the way you preached the gospel to us and the way you told us about the coming of Jesus, we thought that we all would be together, we'll be alive, I'll be caught up, you know, one day, and we'll be chained to our supernatural body, and we'll go and meet Jesus. How come as more of us are dying? And Paul had to tell them that this is how it's going to be. This is going to take, uh, this is what and what's going to take place. Some among us are going to fall, fall asleep. That regardless of what might have happened, other those that have fallen asleep or not, a day will come that we all shall arise. But those that are asleep and those that are awake, alive, we shall go and meet with Christ in the air, and so shall we ever be with Him. Now, if it was as current as it could be in that time, then you will agree with me that in our own time, then we should be saying we are in the end of the end days. We are in the last of the last days. Hallelujah. It's as if you are saying to someone, you have come to the end of a journey, but still you still have about two or three days to go. Hallelujah. So it's different from someone that's at the end of the journey. And just have like few days, I mean, few minutes or few seconds to go to the end of the journey. So, beloved, in their own time, they still have like weeks, I mean, months to go to the end of the um, the journey. But in our own time, we are actually at the last hour. We are actually at the last leg and at the last minute. And Paul was warning Timothy, that was a pastor of a church at a particular time, say, I need you to know this and I need you to also tell the people that are listening to you. In that same manner, I'm speaking to everyone listening to me this morning that we are in the end of the end times and there are some manifestations that become so obvious and apparent. And you could see very well that these manifestations are not only obvious in the world, but even in the church of Jesus, among the brethren, you are seeing some of these manifestations. And what are some of them? He said, number one, that some shall depart from the faith. You could see people now are every reason they want to depart from the faith hallelujah they have a little headache they want to depart from the faith a little challenge they want to depart from the faith a little pressure they want to depart from the faith a little delay in the answers to prayer they want to depart from the faith a little challenge in their finances they want to depart from the faith they have every slightest reason they want to get out of there their car a problem they want to they don't want to be in the lord anymore they look at every pressure and every problem as if god is not there whether there are people that in their days they go through death, they go through trials, they go through flogging and beatings, and yet they still held on to the gospel and say, We'll follow this gospel and we'll keep the faith. But now, as flimsy as not having three square meal, people want to depart from Jesus. As, as simple as not being able to meet up with some responsibility, they put it on Jesus, they dump it on Jesus. People have delay in marriage, they dump it on Jesus as the problem. People have delay in their job place, they dump it on Jesus. People have delay in getting to where they want to ghetto they dump it on jesus people have delay in in in, in, in properly getting a job they, they have every slightest provocation is being dumped on jesus as the cause of it and for that reason people are no longer wanting to go to church 
They don't want to pray. They don't want to fast anymore. Uh, they don't want to live a holy life. They compromise at the slightest rebuke. Uh, they depart. You can't correct them. Why? Because it's obvious. The gospel has been preached to us. Preached to people in our days is, is butter and bread gospel. So when we are not seeing the butter and bread, we dump it on Jesus as the one that is punishing us, as the one that is not helping us, as the one that is not... Oh, Jesus. This morning, the question is to everyone. What kind of a Christian are you? Are you a butter and bread Christian? Because if you think... And serving Jesus only about butter and bread, then you need to think about it again. In the latter days, some shall depart from the faith because of the slightest thing that will be happening. So you hearing my voice this morning, will you be among those that are considered the sum? The word of God is coming to you this morning. Reconsider your faith in Jesus. Some people were beaten for this gospel, yet they remain. Some people were son asunder. That means they were sliced into two. They remain. Some people's heads were chopped off, but they remain. Some people's wives and children were taken from them, but they remain. Some people were dragged. They tied them to a trailer and they were dragged on the streets. Uh, on the concrete on the street, they were dragged to death and they remain. Consider your faith this morning. Are you in the Lord Jesus? Consider your faith this morning. Probably you are discouraged over some things happening to you. This morning, wake up and get back to Christ because there's no assurance that it will get easier by the day. No, it will get more tougher and more challenging. But they that endure to the end shall be saved. God bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine on you. Be gracious and merciful unto you. As you hold on to Jesus, he will not, dip, he will not forsake you, but he will keep you to the end. In Jesus' name. Amen. Maranatha.